Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I have another book haul for you. So in typical fashion there are a bunch of Penguin English Library classics, a couple of non-fiction, a few random fictions in there and that's pretty much going to be the gist of it. So we're going to start with the English Library classics because they are the prettiest by far. I decided to do another bit of a haul from World of Books so a lot of these I got for like £2.50. It does mean that they are used books and you can kind of see that on a few of them which when buying things for very pretty covers I don't actually know how I feel like when they come slightly distressed but they are so much cheaper <laughs> than buying them new from store so we're just going to run through these ones. The first one I have is Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. I read this um, around December this time last year. No sorry I read this in December last year. Really really enjoyable. I actually listened to it on audiobook narrated by Richard Armitage. It's fantastic. It is the classic story of the gentleman who takes a like potion that he's concocted that separates out the like good and bad in him and creates the evil Mr Hyde. Fantastic! Then I have The 39 Steps by John Buchan. This is a very really kind of classic espionage thriller story. Um, it's been made into a play which is very much a comedy. Um, it's where they kind of only four actors play all the different parts and there is a fair amount of like comedic slapstick and kind of timings and things but because of the fact that only four of them play these different roles and it's very sparse um, staging uh, the play is absolutely fantastic but I hear that the book is far more straight laced down to earth strict thriller espionage style so I'm really looking forward to it and it's very short as well. One that definitely is not short is The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. This is one that came a little bit more battered than I'd like. I don't know a crazy amount about this apparently it's the major precursor of the modern mystery novel so it sounds exciting it's got a locked room puzzle in it. It is a lot thicker than I was expecting when I first bought it so I don't really know when I'm going to get around to this one. The only other Wilkie Collins I've read is The Haunted Hotel and I hated it. The ending was really really obvious and it was one of these thrillers where they kind of building up to it and then there's a proper cop-out ending so I am a little bit concerned about this one but I've heard very good things about the Moonstone and Wilkie Collins is kind of known for the woman in white and the Moonstone and not really the Haunted Hotel so potentially I just started in the wrong place for their back catalogue so hopefully this will be better. Then we have one that again I've already read and that's The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. I read it back in April. Absolutely fantastic. The beginnings kind of iconic origin of the time travel time machine story so really really wonderful. I have Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. I'm pretty sure I've read most of this and I'm pretty sure I've also read a decent amount of Alice's Adventures through the Looking Glass and I also think I had it on audiobook as a kid but I can't really remember a lot of the different kind of defining points of the various like the two different books so I would quite like to reread it at some point and again just like gorgeous. I have Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. This is now the fourth Jane Austen on my shelf. I've not read Emma yet, that's the other one that I have that I haven't actually got round to. I've read Northanger Abbey and Persuasions and enjoyed both of them a lot. Uh, Sense and Sensibilities is a little bit shorter than Emma which means I'm potentially more likely to get round to it quicker. Um, I'm not actually planning on reading another Austen this year though. I don't want to burn through her kind of back catalogue too quick quickly and then not have any more of her street in the future because I do really enjoy her work but it's always nice to like have a couple on your shelf ready to go when you are in that mood and also again like World of Books £2.50 you, you can't really go wrong like I think that's a really good way of collecting this particular. Then we have The Warden by Anthony Trollope. It does still have a sticker on it. I'll take it off at some point off camera. Um, again this is one that I know very 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 little about but it's pretty, it's part of the collection. I've heard good things about Trollope. I'll get around to it at some point. And then the final one from that particular book haul, but not the final Penguin English Library classic, is Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. This is probably the book that is the in like the worst condition. I don't know if you can see, it's got a fair amount of kind of like, not even so much water damage, but just like general grime and grub on it. And then the back is, is a lot worse, as you can kind of see there. Most of this does seem to kind of come off with a little bit of wiping. So I might get a very, very slightly damp cloth and try and tidy this one up before it ends up on my shelves. This apparently is an outlandishly outrageous triumph of scandal fiction. So I'm quite looking forward to this one. I think this one sounds quite exciting. Um, so yeah, this is the last one from that particular book haul. And then I have two more that I of uh, the Penguin English Library classic editions which um, are some Arthur Conan Doyle's. I bought these literally this weekend. I just finished the collection of short stories I was reading and I'd read the uh, A Study in Scarlet and was just like I need more Sherlock Holmes on my shelves so that, that way when I'm in the mood for it I can just go for it because these are just too good to not have more of. They're just fantastic. So I picked up The Sign of Four 
uh, which is just a freaking stunning cover like that's incredible and also the Hound of the Baskervilles um, which were the two that the Waterstones I was in happened to have in stock obviously the Hound of the Baskervilles is one of the iconic classic Sherlock Holmes cases I don't know a crazy amount about the sign of four it's a little bit shorter but it was referenced in the short story collection that I was reading so I'm quite excited to get to these at some point soon ish I think they're gonna be really good like wintry fall kind of reads because it's sort of that spooky misty mysterious kind of vibe um, so potentially going to be a decent amount more Sherlock Holmes on my TBRs in the future. So those are all the Penguin English Library paperback classics. That collection needs a shorter name. It's a pain in the ass to say so often. And now I'm just going to cover some of the other books that I bought in kind of three or four separate stints in bookshops. My partner and I, Andy, went down to Milton Keynes and did a little bit of shopping and we ended up in the Waterstones there and I picked up three books. I've got St. Petersburg, Three Centuries of Murderous Desire. This is a huge book which is specifically looking at the history of the city of St. Petersburg which has been known by a variety of different names in the past including Leningrad um, so this is really accounting kind of Russian history but specifically focused in on one of their major cities um, which I think is going to make it quite an interesting way of learning about Russian history because it kind of grounds it in something that everything can kind of revolve around rather than just the broad expanse of like history three centuries is a really long time I've got the uh, giant book book around a similar size about the Romanov family on my shelf and I'm thinking about trying to read both of them over non-fiction November and just like really going in hardcore for Russian history and just spending a month like learning that or that could be way too much and I'll get around to this at some point I I am kind of intimidated by its size but I think it's gonna be really interesting then my other non-fiction that I bought there is time travel a history by James Gleek it's a weird like author's name title this as it says is a history of time travel as a concept and um, it's various different iterations in pop culture and then like scientifically how close or not we would be or could get to the concept of time travel then a fiction book I bought on that trip was the history of bees by Marja Lund this is a very classic iconic dystopian fiction and is um, split from like historical all the way to kind of speculative future so we've got England in 1851 the United States in 2007 and then China in 2098 and the idea is that the future um, basically pollution and global warming has reached a point where all the bees are dead and you have to like work as paint pollen onto flowers to keep them alive and keep them kind of reproducing and growing and I just think that this is going to be um, a very harrowing and interesting read and I love the idea of combining that historical fiction with this kind of speculative future dystopian um, and I've heard amazing things about it the history of bees is one of these like iconic classic books that feature on a lot of like books you should read before you die dystopian fiction if you if you like dystopian fiction kind of list so i'm really excited for this i think this is on my tbr for september which is now uh, for monster -a -thon. so hopefully i'm gonna get to it soon then i had a kind of mini haul again of three books i like going to bookstores and just kind of buying three books it seems to be very much how i amass things on my shelves it's not kind of like buying the odd one here or there I seem to always walk away with three that I really like and three seems like almost this kind of number that it's like oh it's a bit of a treat yourself but it's not too extravagant which is ridiculous because if you do it multiple times in a month it is it, it is extravagant um you've seen two out of the three already if you've watched my August wrap up because I have read them already because I was so excited about them the first one is a non-fiction and it was Grunt by Mary Roach this is to do with the science of war but it's specifically the science behind how we keep our boys alive rather than how we improve ways of killing the opposition it's very much focused on the US Army but it's looking at things like when submarines go wrong like how do you do evacuations from them what are the protocols there um, like reconstructive surgery for various things including genital reconstructive surgery which is really interesting it looked at kind of like sharks and how much of a concern they are when you do have people here in the water for a long time whether it be boats sinking or airplanes going down in the sea and things like that uh, generally absolutely fascinating and Mary Roach is a very big name in non-fiction her book Stiff is very very popular it's about human cadavers she has a really lovely writing style and I would really recommend this one and I might read more from her I picked up book three of the memoirs of Lady Trent series this is Voyage of the Basilisk and this was absolutely amazing and I know for a fact I'm definitely going to pick up book four and five fairly soon and I potentially might even finish off the series before the end the year 
like I am loving her world so much and I really enjoy jumping back into it when I do um, but I also don't want to burn through them so quickly that then the series is over so I'm trying to balance that but yeah this was great and then a super spare of the moment bought at the till they got me they got me good is the confession of Franny Langton this is a thriller but it's also a historical fiction so it's set in 1826 and it's about a woman Franny Langton who is going on trial for murder um, and it's it's her chance to tell her story and it just looks really exciting and interesting and then I did pick up a few more books on Saturday so you saw the um, Arthur Conan Doyle books that I bought but I also bought two more uh, both of them non-fiction I bought Desperate Romantics by Franny Moyle this is the private lives of the pre-Raphaelites I adore modern art I love the pre-Raphaelites I think they're fascinating and I've been kind of keeping an eye out very casually for a non-fiction book on them um, every time I've been in a bookstore I have like a few topics in my head that I know I want to read more on but I don't have a particular book in mind so what I do is I just kind of whenever I'm in a bookstore will kind of vaguely browse that area and if I see one that is actually like encapsulates the exact part of that particular topic that I want to read then I'll buy it but I'm not going to like actively search one on the internet or order one in it's more of kind of a spare of the moment if I see one out then I'll get it and I finally saw one out for this um so I really want to know more about their private lives I know a decent amount about their art already and there was a BBC mini series a good few years ago talking about them and their personal lives and I found it absolutely fascinating having just read The Doll Factory as well which is set in the pre-Raphaelite era and follows a few of them and a fictional pre-Raphaelite brother I really am interested in reading it again I think that their stories are just so incredible and they did so much modern art but they just had such like torrid love affairs as well the whole time and it's just such a fascinating like time period and there's such a fascinating collective of artists um so I'm really excited for this one almost definitely going to get to it in non-fiction November might get to it beforehand because I don't think I'll be able to resist and then I bought again spare of the moment at the till they keep getting me with these is um sea shaken houses a lighthouse history from eddie stone to fastnet it's just a book about nine different lighthouses and i don't know it just it spoke to me like i saw the cover i was kind of flicking through it and i was like do you know what this this sounds really cool and sometimes like non-fiction books are on really random topics that you kind of think like who decided to write a non-fiction book about lighthouses and why but more importantly now that they have done it I need to own it and I need to read it and I just think it's going to be fantastic and fascinating and I can't wait like again it's going to really fit in with that like stormy winter vibe so I'm hoping non-fiction November my non-fiction November TBR is like 30 books long I need to get to more of them before we get to there and I need to just keep extending it into December it's getting absurd um but yes I'm really excited for this one and then on the note of non-fiction I actually have four books that you're almost definitely never going to see in a bookstore and these I bought when I was at the European Juggling Convention which I was at at the beginning of the month um, so when I was there I went to a history of juggling show where this wonderful gentleman called David Kane did a bunch of very iconic historic tricks and talked about the various jugglers and circus performers who created them and he has a series of books and then his um, very esteemed friend and colleague Tom Wall who is another um, historical like juggling historian um, and again is an amazing juggler as well they were both doing a QA and a talk and they had their books there so of course I had to pick up a few so David Kane has like 13 or something like that they're all um, self-published but you can get them from him personally I don't think they even have them on Amazon we have uncovering his juggling history volume two and rediscovering history's great jugglers volume one so this one is more about the jugglers themselves and this is about the various famous tricks and who did them but there's lots of diagrams and pictures of various ridiculous cool tricks um absolutely fascinating and i really can't wait to read them and then Tom's book that I bought which you can actually get from Amazon this does have an ISBN and has been kind of published from a very small indie book publisher sorry it's covered in dust um, which is ridiculous because I've not had it that long but that is juggling from antiquity to the middle ages the forgotten history of throwing and catching I am really excited about this one so David Kane kind of specializes in like the past sort of 200 years whereas Tom Wall very much goes back to as you can see from this antiquity and some of the earliest instances of juggling which is like the um there's like a very famous Egyptian mural that does feature jugglers and this is about kind of the 
the history of juggling going very very far back and then he was doing a deal on um on at the convention which was if you bought that book of his he'd chuck in for much cheaper this very very old one of the earliest instances of a juggling manual or magazine this he's also put in like annotations and footnotes to explain some of the references because essentially it is borderline gibberish to the modern audience and it references a bunch of people and a bunch of things that we no longer have a framework for um so it's got his footnotes to explain what they are on about so you know it was part of the deal and i i couldn't resist it's gonna be absolutely fascinating i love history of circus i mean i love circus in general but i love the history of circus and i know a fair amount about the history of the big top and the touring circus but i don't know much about the history of the various disciplines within circus so i'm really excited to read about them and expand my knowledge base those are all the books that i bought an absolute ton of classics i now have so many penguin english libraries that i really need to get through but i'm doing about two a month at the moment so i'm quite pleased with that and i think that's a rate i should be able to keep up for the most part ignoring non-fiction november and obviously a ton of extra non-fiction which i'm so excited about out. Uh, so yeah so that is it from me where do you recommend i start what do you think to all of these are you interested in the history of juggling as well all the questions etc in the comments down below uh, have a wonderful reading week and i'll chat to you soon bye